Amen. Hallelujah. So the title of our message today is Your Miracle is in Your Mouth. Say it. My miracle is in my mouth. Say it again. My miracle is in my mouth. Hallelujah. It's true. Your miracle is in your mouth. You remember when God created man. He said, let, him make, let us make man in our image. Sometimes we, we, we go into this goofy thinking like it's, it is some sort of like a, a shadow likeness of God. And that's not what God said. He said, let us make man in our image. He made you and I as much like himself as he possibly could. Hallelujah. Not God and then some way down low creature. Sometimes we have this comparison in our mind of God and man is like you and your fur baby. You know, people anymore, they get married. Instead of having kids, they want to have pets. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sometimes I think it's a good idea until they get some education on how to raise kids, and then, then, then we'll send them off. Right. But, you know, you have your dog, and but your dog, you know, they can't speak they're, to you in English. You know, they're just some lower level. You know, really, you know how to tell whether... Who loves you more, your wife or your dog? Do you know how to test which one loves you more? You just lock them both in the trunk for an hour. And when you let them out, see who's happy to see you. <laughs> but we have this perception of God and man and you and an animal. You know, you feed them, you take care of them and... You know, you pet them, and they're happy to see you, and they, they bring you some joy. But there's no fellowship. You can't fellowship with a dog or a cat, especially not a cat. <laughs> Tell me no. no. Okay. <laughs> no. You can't fellowship. But God made you in His image. We're His children. You don't give birth to an animal. You don't give birth to a lower creature. You give birth to a human. They're at your level. They communicate with you. That's how we're created in God's image. God spoke and the worlds came into being. He said, light be, didn't He? And so when he created man, he created man so man could say, light be. He created man to be creative like he's creative. Hallelujah. The psalmist said, what is man that you're mindful of him? That you created him a little lower than the, the Hebrew word is Elohim, a little lower than yourself. Gave us dominion over all the works of his hands. Now, none of you left the house this morning and gave the dog dominion over the house. Now, he may bark and bite when somebody shows up, but he's not going to pay the power bill. He's not going to get groceries. No, at best, he's going to be happy to see you when he gets... When you, you get home, and you're hoping he didn't mess on the, on the floor. No, he gave man, he gave you and I dominion over all the works of his hands. You're created in the image of God. Hallelujah. Let's look at a story for a moment. In Mark chapter 4, about verse 35. Turn there, if you would. I've got the new King James that I'm reading from. Let's get our mind on a, on a higher plane concerning the things of God today than we've been. Hallelujah. Because when we begin to think right, we'll start to believe right. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 4, along, let's see, verse 35, it says, On the same day 
When evening had come, he, Jesus, said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Now, when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was. And other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose. I imagine it might have been something like what came through here last night about 8 o'clock. Man, the wind was just whipping, blowing, I mean, sideways. Rain was coming down sideways, right? And it says, And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat. The waves beat, not the boat, into the boat. The boat was literally filling with water. Right? But he was in the, uh, in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? So the disciples were not overstating the situation. The boat was filling with water. The boat was going to sink. Amen. That's what the Word of God says. It was, it was on the verge of sinking. Jesus was asleep, right? And so they woke him up, said, don't you care that we're perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. But he said to them, to his disciples, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Or you could say this way, how is it that you have no faith? Now, religious thinking and teaching says, well, you know, Jesus, the great I am, the Son of God, came and he spoke to the wind and the waves and they obeyed him. But Jesus walked this earth as a man. You would think, how could he say, how come you have no faith? Well, they had some faith. They woke him up expecting him to do something. Right? Well, some people say, well, that's faith. I mean, they woke him up. But Jesus didn't compliment them. He didn't say, hey, thank you. Just in time. You could have woken me a little sooner. Now we still have to bail the boat out. Right? The wind and waves ceased. Think about all the water still in the boat. They still got to get that thing bailed out now. I could have saved you some bailing if you woke me up sooner. Yeah, and then we got all the songs out there. Jesus calmed the storms. But Jesus said to, to the disciples, how come you have no faith? Where's your faith? What is Jesus saying? Why didn't you guys do something about it? Why didn't you do something about it? Really, he rebuked the winds and the waves. Then he turned around and rebuked the disciples too. And that was not because he was in a bad mood because his pillow got wet. They had the ability the authority to speak to the wind and the waves. You have the authority to speak to the storms in your life. The storm's raging, and people are, oh, oh, Lord, calm the storms. I don't know what I'm going to do. And God has given you and I the authority to speak to the storm. Your miracle is in your mouth. See, we're waiting for God to do something. And He's given you and I the authority, the power of our words. How much more those words in the name of Jesus when we attach that name to our words? Hallelujah. Look at this scripture here in... Luke chapter 1, verse 37. Luke chapter 1, verse 37. You know this story. Mary is having a conversation with an angel. 
How can this be? Verse 34, since I do not know a man. The angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also that holy one who is to be born will, uh, will be called the Son of God. Now, indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. With God, nothing will be impossible. Did you get that? Most amazing thing is the American Standard Version says, that last part, it says, for no word from God shall be void of power. No word from God shall be void of power. Whatever God says, whether it's in this written word here or in what word God speaks to you, that word contains the power to bring it to pass. There's no shortage of power. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That conversation was wrapped up with Mary saying, Mary saying, Mary said, The miracle began when Mary said, the power of that miracle began to work when Mary said. See, she had to be in agreement with it. As long as your mouth is out of agreement with the will of God and the purpose of God in your life, that power is nullified. God cannot do it in spite of you. He's not going to override the authority that he gave to you. Hallelujah. And that's why so many problems, so many Christians, they're, they're, put the devil aside, they are by far their own worst enemy. The words that came out of their mouth. Think about the children of Israel. God led them miraculously out of Egypt with the wealth. I mean, those folks who were rich, healthy, led them all the way to the promised land. It doesn't say the devil kept them out. It doesn't. What kept them out? Mm. Their own mouth. Their own mouth. Your miracle is in your mouth. Your miracle is in your words. Hallelujah. No word from God shall be void of power. The Amplified says, for with God... Nothing is ever impossible, and no word from God shall be without power or impossible of fulfillment. Do you realize what we have? That means when you and I get God's word in our mouth, just like Mary said, be it unto me according to your word. The miracle of incarnation. God born a man. That process began when a man agreed with God. Mary was a woman, but mankind agreed with God and said, let it be according to your word. Mary put God's word in her mouth received her miracle hallelujah you can put God's word in your mouth whatever it is whatever it is this is what makes God's word so exciting is because anything that we face in life when we just go to the word what does God's word say not what M WebMD says. Who cares about that? Let me find out what does God say. Because I know when I begin to say what God says, I've got my miracle. My miracle is sure. 
There's no doubt because it's God's word. And no word from God is void of power. Every word that God has spoken contains the power of fulfillment. So when you and I get his word in our mouth over any situation that we're in, it doesn't matter what it is. If it's concerning your kids, we talked about Demi and allergies. Not only that, but situations with her, with her feet and stuff when she was born. They're saying, well, that was, she may not walk. What did we do? We started to say what God said. Hallelujah. And what did we get? What God said. With allergies, they want, you don't come and get shots two, three times a week for allergies. We said what God said. What does his word say? By Jesus' stripes, we were healed. We got God's word in our mouth and we received our miracle. It was beyond what doctors, all they do is give shots, steroids, and who knows what the aftermath of that would have been. All kind of crazy things happen. Hallelujah. Your miracle is in your mouth. Hallelujah. Are you getting it this morning? I said, are you getting it this morning? You're not waiting on God. God has spoken. He has spoken. Hallelujah. And when you get His Word and begin to say what God says, expecting him to do him to perform it it's not you up to you to perform it you say it it's in those words your words cause his power to go into action hallelujah it doesn't matter jesus pointed to the mountain didn't he in mark 11:23 it said basically if you just had this much faith in other other passages he said it just a, of a grain of mustard seed just that much you'd speak you'd speak you would speak you would speak he didn't say you would pray and I'll speak that's what religion teaches pray we're gonna pray and God's gonna I'm not taking God out of the equation He's right in the middle of it. But it's when you speak his word. His word contains the power to bring it to pass. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we're not waiting on God. We're not waiting. He's waiting on you and I to find out what he said in his word. How about over there? And what is it, First John? If we ask anything. According to his will, he hears us. And if we know he hears us, we know we have. There's no doubt and there's no wondering here. There's no hoping. Hallelujah. All there is is a confident expectation that God is going to perform exactly as his word says. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God shall supply all my need. All my need. Now, the context, the exact context there is talking about, you know, you could say, well, it's talking about finances. But really, with the, in light of the rest of the Scripture, all means all. Everything. Financial. Health. Hallelujah. Uh, for some of y'all, in your body, the miracle that you need in your body is starting with your mouth. Hallelujah. Words. Words contain healing. See, you're waiting. So many people, yeah, say, I would, I would love to see a miracle. 
You know what's better than seeing a miracle? Is having a miracle. You know, it's great when you see people get blessed and get, but it's at another level. When it happens to you, when it happens for you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You could see it this way. God has handed you his checkbook. And before he handed you the checkbook, he went through and went ahead and signed all the checks. Hallelujah. And so he's waiting on you. He's waiting on you to declare what it is. You say how it's going to be. I love a testimony. Uh, uh, Brother John Osteen, he's with Jesus. He's in heaven now. But when his daughter was born, in the birth process, there was, she, there was sustained an injury. It was compared to like cerebral palsy. It was pretty devastating. So that she, her, her muscles weren't developing. You know, she couldn't sit up and do things. She could kind of sit and scoot. She couldn't crawl. And she wasn't developing properly. And he was a good, he was a preacher, pastor, Baptist. Thank God for the Baptist. Amen. But didn't know. And there was a window of time once she got to a certain age, if things didn't change, she's. And so they decided, he and his wife decided, we're going to say what God says. Well, that went over real big in the Baptist church. Because people ask how, you know, your daughter doesn't look good. She doesn't look good. And they would just say what God said. They put God's word in their mouth. And just days before that that deadline, that, that window, she sat up on her own. And from that moment, she began to develop went through school completely normal. Should have been a lifetime disability. But her mom and her dad took God's Word, God's Word that contains the power of fulfillment, and they began to speak over it. It didn't happen in one night. It didn't happen in one week. It wasn't even one month. But they began to say, They began to speak. They began, in doing that, they were releasing the power in that word into that girl's life and body. And they received their miracle. We want to run. Thank God has anointed men and women. So often we want to run to somebody. and get. But that doesn't always work. There's lots of people that leave those kind of meetings disappointed. But there's a way for you to receive your miracle every time. It doesn't matter how big it is. Hallelujah. It doesn't. Sometimes a miracle, other people wouldn't even think a thing of it. Wouldn't even recognize it. But to you, you're like, ah, that was God. God moved in my situation. That... That, for me, is a miracle. Nobody else really appreciates it. Hallelujah. What is it? What is it that you need? Let's take it to another level. What is it that you want? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. People say, you know, well, God promised to supply our needs. You know, but when it comes to wants, that's that's the scripture says, I shall not want. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Your miracle is in your mouth. Hallelujah. No word from God shall be void of power. Hallelujah. (laughs) Are you getting it today? 
So as you begin to speak, now you've got to find out what God says. Hallelujah. Now, you know, maybe you want a red car or a green car. I don't like green cars. A black car. Whatever. Well, you're not going to find in the word black car. But if it's a desire of your heart. You have the word. You can say, Lord, you said in your word, you said you give us the desires of our heart. In that word. In that word. In that scripture. Hallelujah. Is the power of fulfillment for your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're a born-again child of God, you're righteous, you're serving God, you're pleasing Him, the desires of your heart are going to be good. You know it's not an evil desire. So if you want a green car, what things soever you desire, Jesus said. What things, Mark eleven twenty four. 24, whatever you desire, we could say whatever you want or need in that word is the power of fulfillment hallelujah so we do lord i thank you father i'm asking you for that green car hallelujah jesus you said whatever things i desire when i pray believe that means this when i pray I expect. The bank says, there's no way. Your credit is terrible. There's no way. Your debt to income ratio is all out of whack. It says, there's no way. You're just barely making your budget now. There's no way you're going to put a $400 a month car payment on top of that. See, that's what people who are looking to their own ability as their source. But when you look to God, they say, God, you know my situation. And you're bigger. And your word contains the power to bring it to pass. So I'm looking to you. And Father, because I know you're good, I am fully expecting that you're going to bring it to pass for me. I am confidently expecting you, Lord, that it's go- you're, you're going to do it. I don't know how. Lord, I don't need to know how. Hallelujah. Glory to God. See, many times God wants to get our need met on a natural level. Because then, then you'll, it, it jump starts you to get your faith going for other people. And you see what faith, you see what miracles will get done. And then you get excited because you know how to help other people get their miracle. You know how, it'd be a miracle, get $100,000 into missions. I love John Osteen. His, before he passed, his church gave millions Millions. That was back in the 70s, 80s, 90s. Millions in missions. Hallelujah. That's why God wants to stretch us. He wants to use us. And he'll get you started by meeting your needs. Not that we get introverted and look at me, me, me. But when you realize what God will do for you, you'll be moved to see him do it for other people. Hallelujah. Your miracle is in your mouth. You can say it this way. Your miracle is waiting on you. You're not waiting on God. Hallelujah. Find out in his word. Find out in God's word what he says. Hallelujah. 
when it comes down to it, if there's not a specific word, then your, what's the desire of your heart? What do you desire? Hallelujah. What do you desire? And then you say, all right, Father, this is it. You ask him. And then you just begin to expect. I mean like every day you wake up. Again, this could be the day. This could be it. It works for young people. It'll work for a five-year-old. Hallelujah. Parents, you all be, be, be careful. But your kids might be believing for more than you can. You say, oh, honey, that's, that's too much money. We're not gonna do, we, can, we can't do that. Shutting down their faith. Their faith is actually bigger than yours. Hallelujah. Come on. Expect it. Expect a miracle. I love Oral Roberts. Expect a miracle. Think about that statement for a moment as we wrap this up. Expect a miracle. A confident expectation. A knowing God is faithful. He cannot fail. A knowing that the miracle is mine. I don't see it yet. That's all right. That's, that's not the proof of my miracle. The proof is not in seeing it. The proof is in knowing God's faithful, that His word's true. Hallelujah. It's sure. His word is sure. God's word is sure unshakable, immovable. It shall come to pass. Hallelujah. Then you, you stand up in the face of whatever and say, I have my miracle. It's mine. I have it now. Uh, I, I can't see it, but I'm not moved by my senses. I'm moved by something on the inside of me. I know God's faithful. I know his word is true. I know the power is in his word to bring it to pass, and I'm saying it. Constantly saying it. Your miracle, say, my miracle is in my mouth. Hallelujah. Did you get it today? You're gonna have, and some of you are going to have to go back and, and watch this some more till it gets so much down on the inside of you that your vision for your life just goes boom as you realize that there are no financial limits. There are no natural abilities that you have or don't have that can limit your life. Your only limit is what you can say of God's Word and expect it to come to pass. Mountains. 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 Hallelujah. And then, like, you know, we, we so love World War II. Those fighter planes, they come in, and the pilots are getting out, and right there on the side of their cockpit are all their victories. They're all lined up there, all their victories. And you'll have your mountains, one, two, three mountains moved, four mountains, five, six, hallelujah. It's starting to look like a life of victory. <laughs> hallelujah. That's what you're called to, a child of God, full of the Spirit of God, bold as a lion, dare to speak what God says. Hallelujah. Dare to bring change to an entire generation. One person can do it. One person can do it. Hallelujah. How about an army of believers? Glory to God. Well, Father, we thank you for your word today. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, there's so much. There's so much. There's so much that you have for us. Glory to God. Help us to see it, Father. Help us to get it so we can walk in all that you have for us, all that you've prepared for us the full potential 
of your word at work in our lives. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Father, I pray for every person here. Father, especially for those who are sitting here who are not in right relationship with you. Father, help them to know that you love them, that you're not angry, that you're not mad at them, but you love them and have a wonderful plan for their life. Father, for those who are uh, out of fellowship with you, never, that have been born again at one time but have drifted away, the Lord, you're calling them home saying, come back. Come back to Father's house. I've got wonderful things for your life. Help them to know that you're gracious and merciful and are calling them back. I ask in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. With heads bowed just for a moment farther. If you're here, those of you that are here, and you've never been born again, you're not in right relationship with God, God loves you and has a plan for you. Amen. But you have to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Glory to God. And when you do that, the Scripture says that God will translate you out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of His dear Son. You'll be made brand new on the inside, a new creature in Christ. All things passed away. All things will become new. Hallelujah. Or those of you that are here and you've drifted in your relationship with God, it happens. Folks don't mean to get away from God. It's not intentional. Sometimes there's a tragedy in the family, a death of a loved one or a divorce or a, a financial crisis. And life comes at us so strong and, and we just begin to drift away from God day by day. And before we know it, we're, He's not even in our thoughts anymore. We're no longer in fellowship with Him. If that's you, God loves you. He hasn't moved away from you. He's calling you back. Come back into right relationship again. Come home back to Father's house. Hallelujah. So if that's you this morning on either one of those, you've never been born again, and today is your day, or you've got away from God, and today is the day you're coming back. You didn't mean to get away from God. He's, he's not mad at you. He's welcoming you home. Either one of those, would you lift your hand right now and let me pray with you today before we go? Lift your hand up high and say, Pastor, pray with me. I need to be born again. Or, Pastor, I need, I need to get back. I need to come back to Father's house. Anyone, anywhere across the room, lift your hand. Just be bold about it. Hallelujah. All right, I don't see any hands today. You can lift your head and look at me. Say, My miracle, my miracle. is in my mouth. Hallelujah. God has authorized you to take what you need. Authorized you to take what you want. Amen. And of course, we understand that's within the, uh, the guidelines of righteous desires. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It'll get, it'll get in there if you keep listening. It'll get in you. They'll, you'll begin to see it. You'll begin to see it, and you're going to get so excited. You're going to come running into the door. Pastor, pastor, you'll never believe. I mean, yes, you will believe, but it's amazing what God did. Hallelujah. Mm. Mm. Say it. Say it. And receive it. Glory to God. Praise God.